Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 100 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. It's a pretty epic number. Um, and I think as you guys know, uh, being a divisible of 10 number, uh, it's going to be a world in which we have a world download at the end of the episode. Um, so the last few episodes we've seen some pretty crazy changes to this world. We've seen this crazy uh, orb get a little bit larger. We've seen a ridiculous uh, power gen system get built up wherever I placed it. Uh, all the way over here. And uh, this thing's actually been running perfectly, generating a decent amount of RF per tick. Um, in fact, I'm kind of curious as to how close this is to being filled up. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. So we're still generating, you know, 272,000 RF a tick, uh, 140 billion RF stored in that giant orb thing. Then we played around with a little bit more industrial craft, set up a fancy little MFSU that's getting filled up at a pretty decent rate. Um, lots of steam production going on, and our steam generator has kind of been running here for the last little bit and doing a great job. And uh, even got this fancy room down here that I'm kind of proud of my decorative skills on. Yeah, I feel like it, uh, it looks pretty good, right? You know, a couple holes in the wall, but eh, you know, nobody's perfect. I could totally clean that up. I could probably even make the uh, elevator shaft a little bit fancier, but ultimately those are some of the things that we accomplished in the last few episodes. Um, at this point in the series, there's... There's, there's a few mods I haven't even looked at yet um, and haven't even touched or done much with. So I'd like to start playing with those just so you guys have a good understanding of what they're capable of. Now, to be fair, much of my series is usually, you know, built around progressive type stuff. So like we progress from one mod to the next. We're at the point now where there's no mod that's more powerful or more you know, overpowered, I guess, if you will, than some of the mods that we've looked at recently, like Dratonic Evolution. So the fact that the mods we're about to take a look at aren't quite as powerful doesn't mean we shouldn't take a look at them because there's definitely cool stuff to take a look at. Uh, you might also notice a big brown blob over here in an area that used to be quite hilly. Uh, so I used my rod of terra firma, my little axe, my rod of the shifting crust, and a whole lot of mana, which I should probably go fill up over here. Please recharge this tablet for me. Thank you, sir. You're too kind. Uh, did all this with the strictest of intentions to work on a new mod that we haven't played with yet in this series, and that is Immersive Engineering. Uh, it's about time we take a look at that mod. It's a cool mod. There's a lot of neat stuff. And hey, uh, while flattening some terrain, it looks like I may have dire derped a little bit. Um, I need to fix my water mills. So I need to get myself... Do I have the water creation rod? Rod of the Seas. Yeah, that's the one, right? I think that's the one. I hope that's the one. Yoink. Nice. Cool. All right. Good deal. Um, all of these are pretty inefficiently laid out. Like, they could 100% be better. I don't know why I did such a bad job with this. It might have been my flattening of the terrain. Or it might have just been me being a derp. But you're at 16. You're at 12. I mean, I don't have a huge need for this to be any more efficient than it already is. I mean, at this point, right? Like, we're doing pretty good on the extra utility stuff. I just happened to notice while I was over here after cleaning up this big area that, you know, these guys weren't super efficient. But ah, that's good enough. Um, at some point I might expand that if I were to see that I need more power from extra utilities. But this big open area here is where I'm going to start doing some of my immersive engineering stuff. And there's a reason I made it quite this big. Um, immersive engineering is a mod that has a lot of very large multi-block structures. And uh, we're going to be doing a pretty good job focusing on working on some of those in the upcoming episodes. So that's what I'm going to start focusing on. Today we're going to work towards getting the basics of immersive engineering up and running so that you guys can follow along with me in the next 10 episodes before the next world download. So hopefully by the end of this episode and by the time I have the world download ready for you, we've got the foundational work of immersive engineering going on. So with that in mind, let's start taking a look at immersive engineering. Immersive engineering has a whole bunch of really cool multi-blocks that can do some pretty neat stuff. Like, not going to lie, there's some, there's some things that are going to be even fun for me to play with. Ooh, gun turrets. I like it. Lots of uh, cool things. So let's get started first off by getting an engineer's manual. Cool. This guy is your guide to immersive engineering, as you can maybe assume. And uh, where's my pal Clippy? Hey, buddy. How's it going? Good job, Clippy. 
<laughs> awesome. Um, so there's several chapters like most books have, right? Overview and resources gives you an idea of the basics. Um, construction, powers, wires, and generators, and all that good stuff. One of the first things we're going to need to get into is making steel. Um, and we've been making a form of steel, and we've been making refined iron, which is steel. I think they even renamed it, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Steel plate. It used to be called refined iron. It is now called steel. That is a thing that we are making really slowly over here in this blast furnace. Um, and I don't know that there's a way really to speed it up so much in IC2, but luckily immersive engineering has its own processing for steel. So let's get the basics down for immersive engineering. The first thing we're really going to need is to get some uh, treated wood. Treated wood planks are kind of your foundational use for immersive engineering for a lot of important stuff. Um, so there's a lot of items and components that require treated wood. That stuff really basically just requires creosote oil. Creosote oil is produced in a coke oven. So to make one of those, we're going to need coke bricks, these guys. Um, that's just requiring some, some sandstone, some clay, and some bricks. Um, we need to build coke ovens in a 3x3x3 three by three by three structure, if I'm not mistaken. I forget if it's hollow in the middle. Um, so if we take a look at coke oven, it'll tell us here, first important machine, yada yada. Um, what I'm going to show you guys, the most important part of the immersive engineering book, is how it lays out exactly how you can build stuff. Um, <clears throat> and do forgive me, I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, so we've got coke bricks here, right? We can see that information. It's going to show you how to build every multi-block structure. And some of these multi-blocks are a lot more complicated than the coke oven. So you're going to want to be familiar with this early on. You can see that it's a three by three structure. You can use some of these buttons here to pause the display or let it run. And then you can use like the up and down arrows here to kind of see what the different levels are, right? So you're going to want to use that. Cool. And you can also mouse over here to see exactly which materials are required. Seems pretty straightforward for something like a Coke oven, but when we get into something more complicated, so let's look at heavy machinery, like the crusher. Far more complicated because all the blocks here are different. Okay, and you can see on the mouse over tooltip exactly how many materials you need. So you can see why you might want to go ahead and keep your eye on the book to figure out how to build things. Um, but for now, we're just making a coke oven. So we're going to need 27 coke oven bricks if we're going to have one coke oven. What I'm going to do uh, is make two sets. So um, we're going to need more bricks. I think I taught you how to auto-craft. So let's get a stack cooked up. That shouldn't be too slow. Yeah, you're a little bit slow, aren't you, buddy? One of the reasons I got into industrial craft, honestly, was to, to speed up some stuff. Um, there's a couple different ways we can speed up our production of smelting. Remember, one of those was the was the smelter from X Utilities. Um, is it called the furnace? It might just be called that's the thermal expansion furnace, powered furnace from X Utilities, furnace generator, furnace from X Utilities. Did I create one of those? Yes. Um. So this guy does require RF, and you can put speed upgrades in him. Up to 20, I believe. Let's just get some basic stuff here. I want to test this. So you should be you should be doing that. And if I just got like some cobblestone, how fast is this? That's pretty darn quick. It obviously needs more RF to, you know process at that speed, but when full, pretty good. Might consider doing that. Let's just keep that in the back of our mind as an option for speeding up this guy. But he did process a stack of clay pretty quickly, so we will see. Uh, so coke brick, need more sandstone, I presume. Are you like keeping sandstone stocked? Kind of cool. Let's get a stack of it. So that's 28. So now we're going to want 26 in addition to this. So I'm going to want bricks. Another stack cooked up. We'll get 26 ish more so that we can have, you know, an even two Coke ovens. And while we're at it, we're probably going to want some blast furnaces. 
So let's see what's involved in making a blast brick. So there's two types of blast furnaces in immersive engineering that we're going to want to take a look at. Um, there's a regular blast furnace and an improved blast furnace, which is basically just a better way of creating steel. It's a little bit faster. Um, it allows automation, um, and it can also speed up the refinement. Cool. So in order to get that, though, we're going to need steel plates. So we'll need some initial steel. So there's two ways we could go about this. Um, if we wanted to follow pure immersive engineering, we would use the regular blast furnace to create steel and then um, upgrade the blast furnace to steel plates. Let's do that just so we can see it. Like obviously I could use the immersive engineer or we could use the steel that I've been making already, but I feel like that's kind of working around it. So thoughts. I'm not sure exactly how big this immersive engineering area is going to need to be. So I'm going to start building out here, but I'm not going to encase it in any kind of walls yet. We'll get to that later. Um, but let's map out around where we're going to want stuff. So we're going to want some initial, let's get this guy if you're within range. Like a rough idea of how we're going to lay stuff out. Right. So initially, what I'm thinking is we would have some resource production in the back. So like maybe that would be one Coke oven. That would be another. And then we could have like two blast furnaces as well. OK, so that would be your two blast furnaces. So that'll give us, you know, Coke and creosote production and also blast furnace um, steel production. Right. Um, and then we might have further machines kind of laid out in this general area because there's several machines that are actually really large footprints. So we're going to want to make sure that we have a good open area. So I think I'll build a lot of the machines first and then in a future episode, we'll build the building around it. And I kind of want to do so today because I have a video backlog, as you guys know. But today was the episode where these changes uh, were made live. So you guys saw. In the, in the episode that went live today, as in the day that I'm recording this video, is the day that the video where this stuff was made public. And you guys saw that room and you liked it. And there was a lot of positive feedback on, you know, the, the work that I put into making that room look fancy. So I'm going to try and do that again over here once I've built up all the immersive engineering stuff. Because as immersive engineering is a really aesthetic mod in addition to its, you know, technical prowess. So I want to kind of do that again. Um, let's move it out one or two let's 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 start it here right so we'll do one two three one two three that's kind of what i'm going to look at um for the blast furnaces i want to just give myself a little you know buffer from these quote unquote walls i might even want it to be one block further out from the wall there just to like imagine that I had like a wall here this gives me like just a little bit like it's two blocks away from whatever an actual wall would be cool and that just gives me a little extra room because we are we're ideally gonna have a lot of space here to work with so let's get our blast furnace up and running I think you can Cool. So that's the basic foundation. The next thing we're going to need is a hammer. So let's get one of those. All multi-blocks in immersive engineering don't automatically form. They have to be formed with an engineer's hammer. Um, and the reason that you have to do that is to save on taking of chunks, right? We just told the server, the Minecraft server, quote unquote, that's running in the behind the scenes, hey, check if that's a valid multi-block and form it as opposed to some other mods that like frequently check automatically, just helps a little bit with performance. So I think that's my understanding of why you have to do it that way. Cool. Boom. We just formed our second Coke oven. Sweet. Um, let's get some networking over here because I want to, uh, two things. One, have access to my resources and two, be able to pipe items in, pipe items out and all that good stuff. How much coal do I have? Decent-ish amount, about 7,000 coal, not bad. Um, so coal coke, that's the next thing. Coal coke. 
That's the next thing we're going to be creating from immersive engineering. Uh, in a Coke oven, we produce, we just basically burn coal in the Coke oven. It produces coal Coke, and it also produces, for each um, piece of coal, half a bucket's worth of creosote oil. And if we do blocks of coal, um, it'll produce 5,000 or five buckets worth of creosote oil. So pretty good. Um, you get a little extra creosote oil when you do blocks at a time, which is sweet. Um, does it tell me on this UI what the duration of that is it doesn't as it seems um it says sixteen thousand, but i don't know if that's accurate i don't think it is um so i'm pretty sure if i'm not mistaken it takes about nine or ten times as long to cook that stuff up so let's see if our network things are done cool um down here we will place yet another network transmitter Okay, uh, we'll go set up a network receiver somewhere-ish in here. Like, I don't know if I want it to be like in the center-ish of this room, or if I want to have it like far in the back. It technically really doesn't matter. Um, I should honestly think about clearing out a basement, and I may at some point clear out a basement um, for this room. But for now, let's start with... That's actually kind of a tricky decision, but like we're going to want, how about we put it over here-ish, right? We'll start with, let's imagine that this is the wall structure coming out, right? So let's pretend that we're going to want access to our resources here. So what I'll do is I'll just put the receiver here. And you're linked, so it's home, basement, link, cool. And I think I might make a grid real quick. We have a fluid grid in there. At some point, I should probably just teach this thing how to make a grid. Maybe it'll be now. It's probably quicker to teach it how to make a grid than manually craft all that stuff. Boom. Cool. And then we can use that um, to be crafting table, advanced processor, crafting grid. So let's request an advanced processor in addition. Get ourselves a crafting table, our advanced processor, and our grid. Work in progress. Nice. Grid done? Yeah, it is. And this one has to be done manually. I mean, it doesn't have to be done manually, but I didn't teach it. Probably should. In fact, I probably could. Crafting grid, let's just do this because it's easy enough to do. And then any future crafting grids that I decide I need are good to go. Over to here, we are ready to roll. So now I should have access to our whole crafting system here. Beautiful. Let's kick off the production of coal coke, right? Um, so I don't know that we have a UI that really tells us what the burn time looks like, but we'll come back in a few minutes once this is done processing, um, and we'll see how much this has completed and how much this has left afterwards, and we'll have a good idea of really what's involved. So guys, as you can see, one cold coke completed, and this one has a long time to go. Um, so two, uh, two different options here, right? Let's, um, let's do something with something. Um, there's, there's, there's two approaches we could go with. What I'm thinking I should like to do, um, down here I've got fluid storage blocks, right? And they are all filtered. So we can say exactly how much fluid needs to be remaining in them. So let's make another fluid storage block and it doesn't really matter where it goes. I've got a 256 here, but it's full. I didn't teach you how to actually make the blocks though. So does 64 buckets of creosote oil sound good or should we go like, let's go 128. Does that sound cool? So it's gonna craft all that up. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, and then for this to actually make the fluid storage block, we're going to need that, a basic processor and a machine casing. Cool, so basic processor and a machine casing, which should be quick and easy. And 
And then down here, we can do this part again manually. I got it that time. Uh, so I probably am going to want to whitelist what goes in there. So let's get another piece of coal cooking up and a bucket so that I'm ready to collect the creosote oil so I can use it to whitelist. Um, and we'll take a quick nap. And then we'll collect our bucket of creosote oil, whitelist what's allowed to go in that thing, and then we're going to set up an importer on both of these blocks, right? So you're good. You have a long way to go. Definitely takes a lot longer to cook down the blocks of coal as opposed to the individual pieces. So we'll be back in a minute when this thing's done cooking. Oh, and by the way, I think it's the very center of these coke oven blocks that do the actual ticking. So acceleration wand, sorry, not so much going to be helpful. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, we pop this dude down here. Uh, we set it to pull from both sides so that it kind of fills up its own little internal buffer. Um, then I'm going to throw underneath here. And this is why I was talking about wanting kind of a, an underground area. But you can import fluids into the network for me. Cool. Um, and in theory, it doesn't have anywhere to put those fluids right now because I haven't placed down that new whitelisted guy. But any moment now, we should see cold coke show up. We should see that. You are now good. We can throw our bucket in there of creosote. I'm going to go over to our basement. Set you in the whitelist, right? So mode whitelist, compare damage, no. Please tell me that you remember the whitelist when I... Oh, you don't. I hate you. That makes for an annoyance. Uh, let's set this up. Because if I place it down immediately, it's going to start getting water and all that nonsense that I don't want it to get. Um, so let's kind of place it here-ish. And then I'll just run a cable in between them, and that should be fine. right? So you're whitelisted on this now. It's the only thing that's allowed in here. So if I kind of stick that there, you won't get anything. And then over here, we're going to basically... Try and find our way over to wherever. Well, I'm actually really close. I was one block too far. Boom. Right, so now if I put this bucket in here, that should be imported into the refined storage system. And if we pop over to here, we should see in our fluid dude that we've got one bucket of creosote. And if we pop down to nice. here, we'll see that we also have one bucket of creosote. And we can hold a maximum of you know 128 buckets. So let's do exporters. Um, thinking what I want to do is probably, oh, you know what? Coke ovens I can automate, right? Blast furnaces I can't automate the first tier of, but the second tier I can. But I'm pretty sure I can export bus into Coke ovens. I guess we'll find out. Uh, so we're going to want exporters, but we're also going to want importers, to be fair. So I'm going to kick off the crafting of that while I go to set this up. And we're going to want a piece of coal. And basically, you're going to export coal into these guys and keep them running full time. So you're going to get an export bus of coal as our you. So you're going to start filling up with coal and you're going to burn. When you're done, you're going to get coal, right? I was just kind of testing that. And then my importers might be done. And technically, I could have thrown importers on both of these guys, but I thought it would kind of look nice with the tank in between. So you just importer and importer. And what we should now have is foundations for getting cold coke and all that good stuff. Neat. And creosote oil. Super neat. So now, check this out. What I should be able to do, uh, let's get more patterns real quick. Do, 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 do. And let's get... Um, 
treated wood planks. You should be able to now, because I'm storing the creosote oil in the system, auto craft treated wood planks, right? Do, do available one bucket of creosote. Start, and we've got eight of them. Nice. I shouldn't be able to craft any more at the moment because I don't have a bucket of creosote, but in a few minutes, I will. So that's cool. So you can see here, we just got half a bucket of creosote. So it looks like one of the coal pieces just finished. Working perfectly. All right, nice. Uh, so now for a blast furnace. Uh, let's get blast brick. Cool. And this is kind of the same deal. I'm gonna want more bricks. Just get like two stacks. My clay situation is I have plenty. So we'll give that a moment or two to craft up. Should really think about swapping that out down there. Maybe when it's done crafting this clay. Two more sets. I'm gonna do a total of um, two of these guys, but for now, I'm just gonna build the one while I'm waiting for the other clay to cook. Cool. And I should be able to engineer's hammer that dude. Now we've got this thing. Sweet. Um, so the best thing to do here is get your coal coke, right? Um, or your coal coke brick blocks if, you know, this thing were done. But we throw this in here. This cannot be automated, um, but the next version can. So that'll be cool. So this will start cooking. And this thing's a pretty slow process as well, but it's gonna start getting us steel. And that's pretty much what we want. You, sir, need nether brick. You know what, I said I would upgrade this. Let's do it before we wrap up the episode, just so you guys have it for the world download. How's that? <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab my furnace. And I'm gonna grab my speed upgrades. And indeed, I should be able to come down here. Whichever one has, that's furnace mode. This is, yeah, this, this is alloy mode. This is furnace mode. So this I'll pick up in a second here. So in theory, these are all the things that I'm auto crafting, right? I should be able to just this, this, and that, cool. So now if I request nether brick, it's pretty darn quick. I think that's definitely faster than it was in the alloy. Cool, and we'll set up the next one of these dudes. So like I said, the next iteration of this can be automated, but having two sets of these is pretty nice. And then you, boom, cool. All right, so we've got um, some foundational stuff. Oh good, my Coke brick is done. So now I can throw another half a stack of iron into this dude, and this should last pretty good. Nice. Also we get some slag, which we can use to make concrete. Uh, also works for Phytobro, which is cool. Um, you can crush it in the sand. And uh, that's main purpose is the concrete, honestly. But neat. All right, so how about we wrap up the episode here? I'll prepare the world download for you guys. Uh, we'll come back next episode. And we will start playing more with... Immersive Engineering. So, Daryl20 is signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the first 100 episodes of the Let's Play series. Kind of a monumental time. I'm a little excited about it, to be honest with you. I think it's pretty awesome that we reached 100 episodes in the series. Um, but for now, wrapping up point. So, Daryl20 signing off. As always, please do take it easy. <laughs>